Thanks for joining us for this edition of Chuck's Big Adventure. You know, since we've been traveling around the country doing these pieces for you, I've always wanted to go to one place, New England, and at one time, autumn. And by golly, we have done it. So whether it's the beautiful foliage of Vermont, the wonderful mountains of New Hampshire, or the beauty of the Atlantic coast in Maine, we have been here to bring you the sights, the scenery, the music, and the memories of autumn in New England. What is it about New England in the autumn that makes it so special? This right here. You know, it's a very personal thing. And of course, I am a New Englander. All the beauty we've got around here. I mean, look, look at the day today. It's amazing. And you look around to see the, start, the colors are starting to change. I love fall color a lot. And the light, the light in the autumn is lovely. You wake up in the morning and overnight, the mountainside has just changed totally. Well, I love it. It's kind of like a wow, wow moment every, every corner you go around. I grew up in Florida. Our seasons are wet and dry. <laughs> and so I always dreamed of that glorious New England autumn. And it always takes my breath away each year. I've heard about it, and my drive here, I had to pull alongside the road and take pictures, and now I understand that quote. I'm so glad I live in a world where there's Octobers. I hate, it's just gorgeous. It's just a beautiful season. It's just like a whole color palette laid out in front of you that is just amazing a burst of color that brings people together one more time. A goodbye hello. I love that sentiment. It's not the end of something, it's, it's the beginning. beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is. From this to this in just three miles? Welcome to Mount Washington home of some of the world's most extreme weather and maybe the most unique way of reaching a summit. This is not Amtrak. This is not a freight train. This is one of the most unusual locomotives that anybody will ever see. How do you train for this? With over 150 years of history here, we have some processes uniquely adapted to this line, this equipment, and this mountain. Sylvester Marsh came up with this idea in 1852. He was called crazy, but the Cog Railway did get built. The first of its kind in the world. The train continues the steep climb up the mountain's western slope to this day. You know, you started your morning on the train. Maybe a little damp, some nice fall colors. Okay, we have entered the Alpine zone. And as you came up to the summit, wow, we have the weather and Mount Washington living up to its reputation. Tim, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the North Pole, not Mount Washington. Extreme wind chills and hurricane force winds are common here. Watch your head coming through right here. That's why the summit has its own weather observatory. Workers here endure brutal conditions to ensure visitors get this once in a lifetime experience. What's your best pitch for people coming to Mount Washington? Why should they come? It is a uniquely special place here. It is the crown jewel of New Hampshire. It is an iconic mountain full of rich history and some of the most fascinating weather and conditions that are accessible through the Mount Washington Cog Railway that uh, other places people cannot get to. Fall in Jackson, New Hampshire. 
is quintessential New England quaintness. It certainly is a big season up here. We've always been a hospitality town. Lots of reason to come here and see the color. I mean, look around you, it's, it's fabulous. But fall color is not this town's main attraction. It's the gourd. As if the leaves aren't enough to bring people up here, we started doing pumpkin people a very long time ago. Pumpkins with personality. Once pumpkin people came, then the traffic started. <laughs> oh yes, they come from all over the world to see these. You kind of don't know what you're getting when you come up. Literally all over the world. Oh my gosh, what's around the corner, you know? For 38 years, the town's businesses have produced crazy, funny, marvelous exhibits made from pumpkins and gourds. A lot goes into it, and it's the engineering. We had crazy frames and concrete fabric and PVC pipe, glue. In. And he's got quite a schnoz on him. Yes, he does. He has a gourd. That's been quite the challenge. That's a gourd on top of a Blue Hubbard. His whole head is a Blue Hubbard squash. A map helps guests meet all the pumpkin people, and there are a lot. Yep, takes over the town. Nearby North Conway, New Hampshire, has also joined the party. So the whole valley is now participating in this unique art form. Is it hard to get businesses and residents to do this? It really isn't, because once they see the attention that they get, then they step up. And there's prizes, from best of show to most relevant. Michelle and Kevin Pratt received that honor. Always have issues with people hitting the bridge with their car, with Cement a tractor trucks. trailer, buses, <laughs> anything. So we decided to come up with him saying, only you can prevent accidents and uh, collisions. <laughs> Hilarious things every year. In case you're wondering, yes, the pumpkins do get soft and rot, so it's important to have a spare head ready just in case. In the meantime, Jackson's Return of the Pumpkin People is now a New Hampshire autumn favorite and a highlight for visitors looking for something that isn't a leaf. Who's like the pumpkin people? <laughs> we're having a great time on our big adventure in New England. Of course, we're on the beautiful Atlantic coastline of Maine. Maine is known for more than just its lush, fall foliage, which cover hundreds of thousands of acres. It's also known for its relationship with the ocean, and in particular, songs of the sea. It's certainly part of our tradition. Singing, blow your winds, I -o. Blow your winds, I -o. Clear away the morning dew. Blow your winds, I -o. They speak to personal human experience. And I always sort of imagined my ancestors having that experience and then, you know, encapsulating it in a song to pass it on to the next generation so they would understand that experience. Away, haul away, we'll haul for better weather. Way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. I like shanties. Help me, Bob, I'm a bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help. It's a part of my life, it's a part of my family's history. You know, my whole family from Newfoundland all fished, and several of them from the Azores were, were fishermen. Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help and Fred, there is a difference between oh, yeah. sea shanties oh, yeah. and songs of the sea. Sea shanties are work songs, and one of the big differences between the sea shanties and the other songs, which we call forebitters, is there's no plot, there's no story. They're just random verses to keep the cadence. Whiskey straight and whiskey strong, whiskey, whiskey jolly. It's often very improvisational. Uh, you know, the food is bad, the, the captain is terrible, my feet hurt, you know, it's- Get me uh, off this boat. Exactly, <laughs> yes, exactly right. Whiskey for Johnny O. Oh, Billy Riley was a boarding master. Oh, Billy Riley O. Oh, Billy Riley 
was a boarding master. Oh, oh Billy Riley, oh. And then when you topped off, it was, oh, Billy Riley, Mr. Billy Riley, oh, Billy Riley, ho. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was that was a top off, and um, that's that's what the songs were used for. But the dreadnought is the packet that can outsail them all. Bound away, bound away, bound away, where the stormy winds blow. And, and it's a complete open sing. We'll soon be abreast of the Isle of Wight. Come, Come and get, get your oats, me son. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. There's so much latitude to these songs. There are you know, thousands of versions of them. Come down, come down your roses, come down. I think it's important for people to just come down, come down your roses, sing them and down. feel them and pass them on. Come down, come down your roses, come down. Come down, come down your roses, come down. In the resort town of Bar Harbor, nothing says delicious like Maine Lobster. We're talking fresh from the sea this morning to your plate, lobster. Lobster fishing has gone on here for centuries. And we got a taste of that life at sea aboard the Lulu Lobster Boat. Captain Amanda and our guide Jen. These are where the lobsters are gonna wander in. Gave us a crash course in the art of catching these clawed crustaceans. I'm gonna grab a hold of this lobster. It's a hands-on experience if you're brave enough to try to clamp the claws of these finger snappers. Twist. Only halfway. And pull, all right. The next step, seeing if our lobster meets the size requirements to keep. So my lobster here is also legal size because it's over three and a quarter. It still hasn't reached uh, five inches five of inches. shellfish length. So you've got a girl in your hand, I've got a boy in my hand. I'm not going to ask how, I will take your word for it. All though. you have to do is flip them upside down. Make no mistake, lobstering is hard work. Rotting herring. From the bait to the buoys, it can really be a challenge for all the senses. And lobster buoy paint, in my opinion, smells like a cross between the worst smelling garbage you've ever smelt in your life <laughs> and a dead rotting scum. So you, you guys have to do a, a, a lot of changing to your olfactory yeah. nerves in this business. <laughs> After a while, you just try to stop smelling stuff. Lulu gives you the lobstering experience, but they don't keep what they catch. So I got to return my new friend to the sea. Send him back over the side. All right, buddy, here you go. Three, two, one. <laughs> As a new day dawns, first light reveals what may be America's most diverse national park. From the rocky Atlantic coast to the majestic summit of Cadillac Mountain, Acadia National Park is one of New England's most breathtaking destinations. This is such a beautiful place, just where we're standing right now, right? Where else does this happen? I know, happen? this is spectacular. And the weather today. Yeah, the weather today <laughs> is great. And Acadia is such a special place for a number of reasons, right? It's so different. Yeah. I mean, as you can see right now, we are standing on the summit of Cadillac Mountain. And so we are where the mountains meet the sea. And there's not a lot of places that you can get that. Oh, the park is just wonderful. The view is fabulous. It's the ocean. We specifically love the ocean here and everything is perfect. To a lot of people, this is the highlight of their vacation. David Vroom has flown guests along this palette of beauty for decades, and he has never tired of it. And they get up there and they just think kind of awestruck. It's like a wow moment every corner you go around. And then you just stop like this, and it's a beautiful lake below you. And... It's just, it's amazing. And a lot of people come here for that diverse experience to the tune of millions, right? Yeah, so last year there were over four and a half million visits to Acadia National Park and 
for all the reasons we just talked about, to get that mountains, to get that oceans, to do the hiking trails, to bike on the carriage roads, to kayak, it's hard to beat. As Acadia changes daily this time of year, it's easy to see why this is a New England destination for everyone. The sea, the trees, the vistas. All in one park. A really beautiful place and inspiring place for so many people to come generations after generations and we want to continue to preserve that. Well, I hope you enjoyed those stories from the state of Maine. Now we take you to another great New England state, Vermont. The hills are alive and bursting with color here just outside of Stowe, Vermont, but they're also alive with music. The Von Trapp family, immortalized in the 1965 film The Sound of Music, has one of the nation's great lodges. We'll take you there, plus the state's number one tourist attraction, the Ben and Jerry's Factory Tour. Enjoy. Is it true that you're basically the number one tourist attraction in Vermont? Yeah, I think probably right behind skiing, but, well, yeah. uh, but for a building that people come to visit, you get about half a million people that stop by a year. Wow. And so, you know, we want to do what we can to give them a tour, get them inside. All right, so here we are. This is where everything is made. It's not that big of a room. You're going to be kind of impressed here. Right up until uh, our second factory was built up in St. Albans, Vermont, this is where every single pint of Ben & Jerry's came out of. Ben & Jerry seems like it's more of a premium brand. Yeah, we actually, it's, is it's qualified in, in terms of uh, shopping experience as a super premium. Super it, premium. Right, and that's because of the amount of air, much less, and the, the quality of the ingredients is great. Our secret here is our Vermont dairy air. <laughs> dairy air. <laughs> we're, we're open all week. This is what we do. You can also visit the Flavor Graveyard and visit the Dearly Departed. On the headstones, uh, some of them have like a good run, like three, four, five years. Some of them never One made year. it to a sophomore season. They were really that bad. Of course, I had to taste test. We're talking straight from the line to my mouth taste test. The big adventure is how many scoops can you eat? A hundred. <laughs> Sean, thank you. What a treat. The mountains of Vermont are a jaw-dropping palette of pigment, very reminiscent of autumn in Austria. It's the inspiration behind this family-owned resort, a family with a particularly famous last name. I'm Johannes Georg von Trapp. I'm Christina von Trapp Frame. I am Sam von Trapp here at the Trapp Family Lodge in Stowe, Vermont. Still don't recognize the name? Maybe this will help. The hills are alive with the sound of music. That must be something, to have a name that just brings joy to people because of the memories, right? Um, often that's true. Johannes von Trapp is the only remaining living child of Georg and Maria von Trapp. He and his two adult children now run this 2,600-acre resort. When the family started transitioning from music, what was the reason to make this into a resort rather than just a farm? You know, my grandmother realized how special this place was, and they often had friends visiting as they traveled around the country and the world performing. They met so many people, and so friends would come and visit, and they realized the impact that this place had on their friends. And my grandmother felt that this place was too special to not share. Their private lives figured in newsreels. A history tour offers a unique perspective into the family and helps separate fact from fiction in the movie. All right, everyone, come on in. Guests can also visit the family cemetery. Daughter Maria, 1914 to 2014. And learn more about the real lives of each person laid to rest there. Was there a point in your life when you thought, my family has had a tremendous effect on that? Did, was there a moment where you hit that realization? I, I think daily, <laughs> really. I, I mean, it, we get, we just get a, such a huge range of ways that people have brought the sound of music into their lives. Sam, as we were driving up here, 
music from The Sound of Music just came roaring through my head. And there was a song, I, I love it, but I can't think of how it starts. It's could be doe a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me, a name, I call myself, fa. A long, long way to ski. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's my version, yeah. <laughs> I got to sing the sound of music, music with a Von Trapp. And I just did something that I've never done. In my 15 years back here, I have never sung on camera. Really? Yeah. You're the man. But that's it's an easy one. That's a good one. Let's cut a you know. CD. So, yeah, we should. <laughs> that will bring us back to do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, so, do. How do you honor? unconditional love. How can you praise your most faithful companion? Well, in this corner of Vermont, you give them their own mountain. Who comes to visit? Everybody. I mean, you know, people come from all over the world and we have a map out on our front porch with pins in it that shows where people have come from, which is amazing. And this is more than just a park or a gallery. It's kind of a mission, right? It is a big mission. It's a mission to preserve artwork, the artwork of Stephen Hunick. Renowned folk artist Stephen Hunick and his wife Gwen created Dog Mountain in 1995. The Hunicks turned a barn into a studio surrounded by 150 acres where dogs and their owners are welcome to roam and play. Stephen had a relief, says dogs make people human. <laughs> and I bet you see that every day, don't you? <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's true. I know Stephen um, had a wit, whimsy, and wisdom, you know, so he had these little phrases that are all over the artwork and just out there. He was spot on with that, you know, that connection. The centerpiece of Dog Mountain is the chapel. Hunick called it the largest and most personal artwork of his life. The walls are covered with pictures, drawings, and letters left to remember beloved pets who are no longer here. It's been 365 days without you. I feel only one day closer to accepting it. Miss you, old girl. Mm. What's cool about the chapel and how people are after they exit is that everybody's really real and raw and their guard is down. And you meet people, you know, they'll just start talking to you without pretense. I'm a dog owner, you're a dog owner. One of the things that I notice about people who own dogs is <laughs> when they are around that animal, they are softened. It's Do true. you see that? Yeah, definitely, because uh, they're with their baby, you know? It's yeah. kind of like seeing people with their little tiny children. It's, just, it's the same vibe, I think, you know, and, um, and it's wonderful. Tragically, several years ago, Stephen and his wife Gwen both lost battles with depression. But today, <laughs> friends have ensured their legacy lives on through the mountain rejoicing in the joy that only a pet can bring. Things are finite, and life is short. Dog Mountain is a great place to come and be celebratory of that. You know, even though it's kind of tough, we're really lucky to be here on the earth, and uh, especially people with dogs. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoyed these stories from Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine, all part of Chuck's big adventure, Autumn in New England. This was one of the most fun trips that we have ever had in this series. And if you would like more information, my blogs, uh, behind the scenes pictures and some stories about our trip, go to WTHR.com slash Chuck's Big Adventure for more. We've got more trips coming up in the next few months and we hope you enjoy them and watch them on WTHR, our 13 plus app, and of course at WTHR.com. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>